UTI, also called urinary tract infection, this plagues millions of women around the world, and especially in our country, in India, so many women go through UTI every single day. It's not spoken about much, and usually the only course of medication is antibiotics, which are given by the doctors, which can actually create more and more problems. Now, there are two kinds of UTIs. Let's first understand what causes it, because when we're trying to treat something at a root cause level, it's extremely important that we understand how it happens in our body so that when we have understanding, we can apply logic, common sense, and make lifestyle changes that can either prevent it or heal it. There are two kinds of UTIs. It's called urinary tract infection. It's an infection of your urinary tract or your bladder and in some cases your kidney. So there's a grade one UTI which usually comes with a certain amount of symptoms. Those symptoms could be pain while urination, a burning sensation in the vagina or in the urinary, urinary tract. Uh, urinary tract. And then you have the urge to constant urinate, constantly urinate, but every time you go to the loo, you pass out very, very small amounts, but you constantly have the urge to urinate. Then you have muscle aches, you have abdominal aches, you feel tired and you feel weak and very heavy in the pelvic region. The urine that you pass out could be cloudy, it could have a foul smell, and in some cases it could be a bright pink or a light red. Okay? And uh, technically, these are some of the signs of a grade 1 UTI. Now, a grade 2 UTI will be accompanied with a lot of pain, the same symptoms, and also fever. And we need to understand when that happens, there may be a ne uh, it would be necessary to possibly take antibiotics. But number one, we need to find out why we get UTI in the human body and how we can prevent it from becoming a, U uh, a, U a UTI grade 2, which is accompanied with fever. So it is a bacterial infection. These bacteria, these bacteria line the urinary tract, in some case they get into the bladder, and in some serious cases it also gets into the kidney. Okay, the immune system does not recognize these bacteria, and hence the system allows them to grow. And if we can get this bacteria to be flushed out of the system, you can automatically heal UTI. Now the problem with antibiotics, the good thing about antibiotics is if it's a very serious infection and a grade 2, it would be necessary. But in most cases, the moment people get symptoms of the burning sensation or the urge to pass urine and they're unable to do that or all the aches and pains, they immediately get an antibiotic, which in turn wrecks havoc with their good bacteria. Now your good bacteria is also responsible and necessary to prevent UTI or also heal UTI. And what's happened over the past is so many people, so many women are using antibiotics that the bacteria has now become resistant and we're left with a bigger problem that most of the antibiotics are not very effective in UTI anymore. And then the woman has to go from one course of antibiotics to another and within three to six months they get the same infection back again because you've not treated the root cause. So let's go over some of the causes of UTI. Number one, low water intake. I'm big on water because you know, 90% of your blood is water, and if we don't have the right amount of water in our system, there are innumerable problems. Now, I just, I just spoke to you about what happens. Bacteria starts growing on the inner line of your urinary tract, or your bladder, or your kidney. If you have low water intake, this bacteria tends to grow more and more, but if you have the right amount of water, your kidneys can flush. Your kidneys are like filters. They flush using a medium of water through your bladder, through your urethra, out of your urinary, uh, through your urinary tract infection, uh, your tract and out of your body. So if you have low water intake, you are creating a terrain for the bacteria to grow in your system. And I understand one of the biggest problems in India are women are low on water because we don't have proper, pro uh, proper toilets. And with traffic, no woman wants to drink water and be caught in a car in traffic with their bladders full. So they choose to be low on water intake because of our infrastructure. But there's a way around this. You need to plan your water intake at places where you have access to a toilet. So preferably when you're home or when you reach office, load up on your water. But it's not a good thing to have a low water intake because it lowers your immunity and it allows the bacteria to grow in your urinary tract, which causes the infection. Number two, holding, holding your urine in you for a long time. And I know, again, that's a valid point that we have in India. We don't have access of toilets all the time or we're caught in traffic and we hold on to our urine. Holding on to your urine allows, it's toxic. Urine is toxic. That's why the body needs to pass it out. But because it's staying in us because we're holding our urine and when we have the urge to urinate, we're not doing it at that point, we allow bacteria to grow. We give your, your bladder and your urinary tract the... Uh, 
the terrain to grow because we're holding in toxic waste which shouldn't be in the human body. Now, in sexually active women, many of them use condoms which, are sp which have spermicides and this also causes bacterial growth. So women need to know about what the possible causes. Women who use diaphragms as well can have UTIs formed in their system. Also, having intercourse and not washing yourself immediately can allow some of the bacteria to push back into your urethra and actually infect and grow bacteria. This can happen in people who are diabetic, who need to urinate and don't urinate, and of course, people who have low immunity will allow bacteria to grow not just there, but everywhere in the human body. So, what are the ways to overcome UTI without resorting to antibiotics as far as possible? Number one, fluids. Improve the amount of fluids in the human body. You have to hydrate yourself. This is so important and one of the commonalities that we spoke to in regards to cancer and every possible disease, we notice people have low water intakes. I'm talking about two to three glasses of day uh, of water a day. Now that's detrimental to your immunity, to your health, to the vital functioning of your organs. You give your body the terrain it needs to grow disease, grow bacteria, grow pathogens and viruses and all of that stuff. So make sure that you have the right amount of water in your body. Coffee and tea does not count as water. In fact, coffee and tea are diuretics. If you're having coffee and tea, you need to increase your intake of water because coffee and tea work as diuretics, flushing out more water from your system and keeping you more dehydrated. Urinate more often. Listen to your body. And this is the best part of it. The biggest lifestyle change that you can ever make is listening to the biofeedback of the human body. So if you feel like urinating, you drop whatever you're doing. If you have access to a bathroom, a clean bathroom, and you urinate. Holding your urine is the worst thing that you can do for your body, for your bladder. And so many, today, so many women today, as they age, they lose control of their bladder, you know, their bladder muscles because over the years, their bladder muscles are weakened because they hold urine, which holds weight, and that muscle weakens over time. So important for you to urinate when you have to. Okay, keeping yourself clean and dry down there is extremely important because we all know that wherever there's moisture or there's wetness, you allow bacteria to grow. So it's extremely important that, you know, women who wear tight underwear and all these tight jeans and spandex and all of that stuff, it's okay for a little while. But you, you have to understand that that area always tends to stay moist. That material doesn't allow your skin to breathe. And because it's moist, you allow bacteria to grow. So cotton is the best. And when you're in a place where you don't have to wear tight clothes or underwear, that's the best way to be. Okay, we spoke about contraceptives. You have to make sure that there are many women who are allergic and who have allergic reactions to certain kind of condoms, especially with lubrication and spermicides and diaphragms and all of that stuff. So if you constantly get UTI, that may be something that you want to look at. Probiotics, being on a good probiotic when you have UTI is beneficial because it's a disease of poor bacteria building up in your system. You need the right bacteria to balance it out. So make sure that you get your probiotics through natural foods like your yogurt or your kimchi or your fermented foods or you take a good quality probiotic and that will help you relieve the symptoms of UTI almost immediately. Vitamin C, why? Because vitamin C fights bacterial infections. Vitamin C boosts immunity. You want to do everything to boost your immunity while you have a UTI. You see, the simple way is popping an antibiotic, but that's not healing you. That's wiping you off your good bacteria, which is not only going to make the UTI infection come back at some point, but also cause innumerable other problems in your body, ranging from low immunity to acidity to diarrhea, and you name it. My favorite, cranberries, cranberry extract. Now, we live in a country where we don't grow cranberries, but the cranberry extract is by far the most powerful, the most powerful fruit extract when it comes to UTI. So most of my patients, you know, who have UTI, within an hour or two hours, we can get them relief by just making them take a cranberry extract and lemon water or half a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate mixed with water. Now, why sodium bicarbonate? Why lemon? Because lemon makes the urine and the blood more alkaline, okay, which doesn't allow the bacteria to grow, which actually helps you kill the bacteria. Sodium bicarbonate is the quickest way to make your urine alkaline and less acidic. When your urine is more acidic, guess what grows? Acidic mediums give bacteria the soil they need to grow. So you take half a teaspoon of baking soda in water and a cranberry extract, and I can guarantee you, you will have relief within an hour to two hours if it's a grade one UTI. You can do the same protocol if you have a grade two UTI, but if it's accompanied with a fever and infection, you may need to get this checked by a doctor for sure. Garlic, eating one or two pods of raw garlic 
is also highly antimicrobial and antibacterial. So it helps you get rid of all that candida as well as the bacterial growth in your urethra, in your bladder, and in your kidney. So I think uh, these are the most important vitamins when it comes to UTI for sexually active women. It is extremely important that you urinate post sexual intercourse. If you can't urinate, you wash yourself really well. And for, people, for, for women who pass a bowel movement, the way of wiping is front to back. So you ensure that all the bacteria gets wiped out that way. But these are extremely important points for women. It's not fun living... Sorry about that. It's not fun living with UTI and just resorting to an antibiotic is detrimental to your health. So again, it goes back to the basic lifestyles. If you're drinking the right amount of water, you're urinating when your body tells you to do so, you're eating a clean diet that boosts your immunity, you can't have bacterial growth in your body if your immunity is high. And yes, we have access to dirty, unhygienic toilets that also makes bacteria push up your urethra and cause these conditions. For women who travel a lot, and especially air hostesses and people who do long flights, using an airplane loo is one of the most unhygienic things. So I always recommend that women, especially doing long flights, build their immunity. They take a vitamin C, they take a cranberry extract, and they have lemon water and you know, refrain from alcohol on long flights because you don't want to do anything that lowers your immunity because you still got to use the loo because we all know that holding your urine is also going to create a problem for you. So, yep, it's a difficult place for women to believe to live in considering the unhygienic factors that we have in our society and in our country. But it's extremely important for us to know what we can do with lifestyle to heal UTI and to prevent UTI. So on flights, what you have in control is not staying away from the loo because I need you to drink water and I need you to go to the loo. It is taking a vitamin C carrying a cranberry extract with you, having lemon water, and staying really hydrated on your flight to keep your immunity extremely high. For everyone else, these are the tips that you have to go. So don't, don't ignore the symptoms. So many women are, they're not ashamed, but they're shy to talk about UTI because it, inv it involves the burning sensation in their vaginas and all of these things. It involves sexual intercourse and all these things, but we don't have to be shy of these things. We don't have to be ashamed of these things. These are natural. Sex is natural to the human body if we do it the right way and we take the right precaution. Having an infection in your vagina is normal, but we should know how to, how to address it and, you, and you know, take care of it the right way. So it's as simple as that. Drink your water, stay hydrated, boost your immunity, vitamin C, cranberry, a great probiotic. As you can see in most of my videos, everything moves towards gut bacteria because 85% of your immunity starts in your gut. So if you have an unhealthy gut, you have innumerable problems. And how do you, help, how do you heal an uh, unhealthy gut? Number one, get the right colony of good bacteria and bad bacteria. Almost every one of us have more of the bad bacteria and less of the good bacteria because of poor lifestyle, contamination in food, pollution, all of these things. So it makes sense to re eat foods that, that, which are rich in probiotics or you just take a super healthy vegan probiotic that have zero side effects and you're sorted. That's about UTI. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. But we got to, as a society, start moving away from antibiotics. I'm not against doctors. I'm not against medications. But if we keep taking it like candy, it's only harming us more and more. When our body has the inbuilt intelligence and brilliance to deal with all of this in a natural way, all we need is knowledge, all we need is common sense, and we need the motivation to do these things and believe in it. And believe me, it works. Nature works better than almost anything on this planet. That's how it's designed. Have a great day, everyone.